everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the development sessions. My name is Stephanie Russell and I am the Economic Development Manager for Georgia Municipal Association. Um, we are excited to be hosting this session today on new market tax credits and I want to give a, um, a couple housekeeping tips. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the Q&A or the chat and we'll be monitoring that. And um, this uh, session is also being recorded and will be available at uh, georgiacitiesfoundation.org website. So with that said, we're going to get started and I'm going to introduce our speaker today. I'd like to introduce Randy Griffin. He is the president of Georgia Community Reinvestment Fund and we will be talking about new markets tax credits and potential funding projects for your cities. So Mar uh, go ahead Randy and take it away. Well, thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate uh, you and Larry and uh, Chris having us on today to, to talk to folks around the state about new market tax credits and what they can uh, bring to Georgia. Um, we are being told that the deadline, that the announcements for uh, this year's new market tax credit uh, allocates is going to be announced in the next 30 up to 40 days. So the time uh, is now for folks to uh, to definitely start thinking about which projects in their communities they would want to fund with new market tax credits and, uh, and, and how that could benefit uh, um, their, uh, their, their community. Um, Stephanie, if, there, if you could just go ahead and pull up our slides and we'll start work, working through them. And if you could just advance them as we, uh, as we work through them. Um, if you want to go back to the, uh, this, this slide would be a great start. So um, we'll, we'll go back to the first slide for starters. Yeah, so this is, a, we're a new entity. Uh, we have been around for 34 years. CSRA Business Lending, we're a certified development company of SBA. Uh, we've got lending arrangements with the Department of Commerce, Department of Agriculture. We've funded almost 850 projects throughout Georgia, totaling about $800 million. We're located in Augusta on the Georgia-South Carolina line, and actually some of our programs serve uh, South Carolina as well as Georgia. Uh, we formed the New Georgia Community Reinvestment Fund really with the help of a lot of key economic development agencies in Georgia. Uh, we have board representation from the Georgia Department of Economic Development, the Georgia Association of Economic Developers, Georgia Power, ECG Georgia, uh, uh, GMA, uh, Larry Hansen. Um, a lot of folks have really supported us uh, in this effort uh, to get this launched. If you want to go to the next slide, please, Stephanie. Um, new market tax credits are an incentive to provide a, a federal tax credit uh, that can be sold and monetized uh, that is then converted into a forgivable interest-only loan that we can make to a company as an incentive to locate in a qualified low-income community. Um, new market tax credits are extremely difficult to obtain. And the process uh, of, of entities like us, a, a, a certified uh, development entity under the Treasury Department uh, that applies for these, we are under stiff competition to try and try and get these credits. What's unique about Georgia, as you'll see in a second, Georgia is one of the seven most underserved states in the nation for new market tax credits. Um, and many states have multiple CDEs. Uh, trying to bring these tax credits back to their state through a variety of for-profit, non-profit, government-related organizations. We don't have any entity right now that lists Georgia solely uh, as its focus and where all its investments will go. And we would be the first uh, in the state to do so if we were awarded. Uh, next slide. And some of this is going to be a recap if you set in on the, uh, on the previous session. Um, the, the big thing is, is, is in our SBA world, I'm very close to colleagues in Oklahoma and Iowa, and through the years going to conventions, as you all do, we sit down and, and start talking to them, you know, over, over breaks and over receptions on all the terrific projects they were doing in their states, and they were constantly telling us, you know, Georgia just does not get their, their fair share of uh, new market tax credits. Uh, one colleague I'm really close to in Oklahoma, their entity, uh, which has got a population about the third the size of Georgia has received uh, now over 100 new market tax credit projects, one for about every 38,000. Uh, Iowa, that, uh, that we're actually going to work with a component of Iowa to set up an investment fund to sell our credits, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a second. Um, 
they uh, they likewise, you know, from a per capita basis, well ahead of us. What it means is in red. If we were just on par with Oklahoma, Georgia should have 162 more new market tax credit uh, investments in the state, and that's essentially free equity going into projects. Um, and if we're the same as Iowa, we should have 63 more. Right now, there are only four Georgia CDEs that received allocation in recent years that are headquartered in, in our state boundaries, and that's SunTrust, uh, Truist, that uh, has been a player, one of the top players nationally. Uh, they, they receive allocations, but not only are they serving Georgia, they're serving other states, uh, serving nationally all their footprint. They received 65 million in 2020. Atlanta Emerging Markets is just a wonderful organization in Atlanta that has done some transformational projects in Atlanta. Uh, they've received six allocations. My guess is they will, uh, they will receive allocations ongoing. They did not apply in the round last year, and we're just assuming they're gonna apply in 2021. Carver Financial, what Robert's done with uh, Carver State Bank and affiliate of them out of Savannah, they're one of only 27 African-American chartered banks in the nation. The Treasury Department has now backed them with two allocations uh, targeted at the markets they serve. They serve a national footprint, but most of Carver's investments so far have been in Georgia as well, and they have just done a terrific job, but they're only one out there that's trying to get these credits. They received 50 million in allocation in 2020, and then Habitat for Humanity, which is truly a national organization, received 30 million in 2020. None of the deals that they have done uh, have been in the state of Georgia. One of the big opportunities for businesses, for cities, for counties, for economic development organizations, is the Treasury Department has decided to award, and Congress has approved $5 billion in allocation in the awards that will be announced in the next 40 days versus $3.5 billion that was awarded in 2020. Uh, next slide, please. What type of projects, and the reason that's a big deal, is when you think about Georgia being underserved and you think about us not uh, getting enough tax credits, and you think about um, if we were on par with Oklahoma, we'd have 163 more. If we were on par with Iowa, we would have 60 more. These are some examples of projects that have been funded in Georgia. Uh, premium, uh, uh, premium Peanut in Douglas, uh, the original Macy's uh, office building in Atlanta, uh, Prince Avenue Market in Athens, the Atlanta YMCA, the North Georgia, uh, Northeast Georgia Food Bank, and Ron Clark Academy uh, in South Atlanta. They, they received uh, the last allocation on their Performing Arts Center. You think about these type projects that would transform, transform communities and bring services that are needed to low-income communities, and you multiply 163 more food banks, 163 more um, charter schools targeted at at, at risk use, um, 163 more YMCA's, 163 more ag manufacturers, and you're talking about several million dollars of essentially free equity that went into these projects that we're we just have not had the capacity to do as many as we as we really should. Uh, next slide. Uh, one of the projects that really drove me to, to really want to pursue this when we started this two years ago, and the first meeting we had was with the Georgia Bankers Association to say, hey, do you think we're crazy? And the next meeting was with um, a couple of the, the, the directors of state economic development agencies. This is a project example we used. Um, this is big Project Big Blue. Uh, we, we realized when economic development cities, counties, when you send us a new market tax credit, we have told our advisory board in our meeting on June 25th, when we look at these, they're gonna probably be code name and no address until we get to the 11th hour uh, because of confidentiality working with the economic developers, whether it's Georgia Power or ECG or, or whomever. This Rossi Brothers building is a situation where IBM decided they were gonna uh, build a 1,200 employee uh, tech center and they put an RFP out to, to every state. Four states made the final cut. Uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, Iowa, when they went in to respond, one of the things that IBM wanted is they want a certain amount of square footage space, but they didn't want to buy the building. They wanted to lease it. So what, what Iowa Community Development did, which was really unique, they took a $10 million allocation on this $45 million project, and they went to two other entities, including U.S. Bank and one in Utah, 
and created a $30 million tax credit allocation they put on this project, which created $6 million and essentially free money for the project. That $6 million went to the developer. The developer was able to do the build out of the building, drop the rent rate on that building that IBM was shopping in little bitty Dubuque, Iowa, with 97,000 people, got 1,300 jobs in 2008 with an annual payroll of $59 million. And it was the deciding factor on where IBM located. And so it is a competitive tool. And one of the things I've learned along this journey working with all these great economic development organizations we have in the state is how much talent we have uh, around the state in our economic development entities. And that if we could put this tool in our toolbox and it's something that we thought of a nonprofit that traditionally has done SBA type lending that was frustrated we're not making a bigger impact and we're not doing more for for smaller metro areas of Georgia and rural communities of Georgia, if we can put this in the toolbox uh, of the Andrew Shires and, uh, and, and the Matt Forches and the, and, and the Larry Hansons and the other economic developers in the state and they know about it, then all of a sudden we start, um, we start giving them uh, some ammo or a real tool that they can use to try and win some of these, some of these industries. Uh, next slide. You look at when we apply, this is a repeat of the same slide. You can see some of those same projects, and I won't focus on that uh, right now. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide, you see some of those that was funded uh, that you'll have with you. These are the ones since we applied on November 19th that made it public online that you could see. And there's one particular project I want you to pay attention to, and it's the one that is next to last on this list funded in 2020, which is the Coca-Cola bottling plant in Tifton that was funded by three CDEs that put in a total of $22 million. And you'll see as we get to later slides why that was a strong project, why it scored, and it will give you an idea what, what either we or others who are going to get these credits uh, are going to be looking for in terms of whether we're going to say yes or whether we're going to say no. The big thing about new market tax credits is you get a lot of people showing up looking for a handout. And we are going to say no 19 out of 20 times. Because of how competitive this is, uh, we have to save our powder to transformation for transformational projects. Good projects don't get done with new market tax credits. Only transformational great projects get done with new market tax credits. It has to see, achieve specific uh, impacts, okay? Um, next slide, please. One of the things we're getting, uh, when I mentioned we're, we're, we're working with Iowa, and a uh, friend I've known for 25 years in the SBA business, is he introduced me to their team, and we're gonna use their same team that has worked on uh, $340 million in tax credits in the state of Iowa. And we're gonna use Novogratic uh, out of St. Louis, it would be our accounting firm, Plain Financial, to handle uh, the technical payment collection, uh, monitoring, uh, administrative. We're going to use their attorney, John Bones, a partner working with our attorney here in Georgia to close the deals in conjunction with the attorney for the Georgia Bankers Association who might be helping some of the investors uh, buy these. And then Lathrop Lake, Gage down at the bottom, Jared Mikoff, he will, he will help us manage uh, to sell those investments. Uh, so we get an extremely experienced team. We think Treasury's going to like that, that we're signed up with some experienced people, even though we're new to this process. Next slide, please. The biggest strength we think we have is when you apply for new market tax credits, and like a lot of programs, and I'm not telling anybody on the phone anything they don't know, they're driven by money sometimes. And Treasury, I believe, is savvy enough they can see, uh, and the CDFI fund can see through that. We are a true nonprofit. Our, our purpose is as a collective group. And you see some of the folks we have around Georgia that have signed on to be our advisory board on this. If we get these credits, it's going to be because of these 12 folks that have weighed in and helped us, in my opinion, um, combined with our impact and what we've done historically. 
Uh, but I really think Treasury is going to look at this and say, you know what, they've got a group that has their life's work has been to do things throughout Georgia to volunteer their time and give their time. So I, I, we had an advisory board meeting in Madison on June 25th with this group. Uh, can't thank can't thank them enough for uh, you know for stepping in and helping us. Next slide, please. This is the eligibility map. So when you go to do a new market tax credit program, the number one qualifier is it has to impact um, low-income communities, um, primarily severely distressed low-income communities. And I'm going to give you an address where you can go to this map uh, at the end of this. You can Google in any address in the state, in the country, and it will show you all the qualifiers for new market tax credits that that project will achieve. Um, red is eligible, nothing else needed. Yellow is also eligible, but yellow needs to impact red. Uh, about one out of five deals are actually done in the yellow area, but they're generally a regional project and employ hundreds of people, a regional food bank, uh, something that's going to impact a variety of citizens. You look at some areas on this map, like Albany, for example, in um, Selma, who, who with Albany Community Together, uh, on our, who's on our statewide advisory board, we've dug into the Albany uh, eligibility area, Valdosta, uh, Columbus. You start looking at some of these areas, Dalton, there's a lot of area around it that's gray and that's ineligible. But when you zoom in, there's a ton of pockets that are eligible. The, the, the most glaring thing is really when you go to the coast. The income level, obviously, on the coast is very high in a lot of these census tracts. But there are areas around St. Mary's, there's areas in Brunswick that are eligible for, for these as well as the city, city limits of Savannah. Uh, next slide, please. So how does the new market tax credit work? So when you think new market tax credit, and this is sort of a recap, you've heard this before, and if you're new, it, it will uh, it'll sort of uh, bring it down to a, 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 a basic level. When we think about new market tax credits, what you think is, okay, company locates on low-income census tract, they get a credit on their taxes. Well, you could conceivably take a new market tax credit and give it to a company for locating in a, in a low-income community. Um, IBM, in the Iowa situation, they could have given that $30 million tax credit to IBM. But what happens with companies is, and what happens on deals, is folks want those monetized. So, when we say those millions and millions of dollars, we actually applied for 65 million in our, um, in, in our application in November. It's going to be, be announced in the next you know, 45 days or so. If we receive a $40 million allocation and we were to say have a project on a $72 million project in Georgia and say that manufacturer needed 22 million for building and miscellaneous and they were going to lease $50 million worth of equipment or finance it elsewhere. We could take a $10 million allocation and put it on that project. And when we do, it creates a 39% tax credit. That tax credit is then taken over the next seven years in increments of $600,000 the first three years and $500,000 the final four years to whoever buys that credit. So if you think of it uh, like this, Synovus Bank, which is Georgia's largest bank, I'll use for example, that's a $54 billion to $60 billion bank probably by now. Um, Synovus can pay federal income taxes, or they could sit there and say, you know what, instead of us paying federal income taxes, we want to buy this credit at 80 cents on the dollar, and we'll save money on our taxes will receive CRA investment credit, and we'll help our community. We'll help do some good for our community. Um, so if we sell that tax credit, the $3.9 million tax credit, in this example, to Synovus, that would be discounted at $3,120,000 in proceeds that we get from the sale. Now, because it's an investment, IRS requires an investment. Not only do you have to have our piece to get to the $10 million, you got to have uh, you got to have the rest of it to get a $10 million investment to qualify. And that usually comes with a leverage loan. Traditional bank financing, uh, projects come into a town, they go into the community bank in town, the community bank is willing to make them a loan. They're the ones doing that leverage loan. Our, our proceeds from the tax credit sale are another component 
are part of that, along with often many other forms of investment in that project, historic tax credits, equipment leases, equity from the company, whatever the case may be. So in this case, if, if let's say we did a leverage loan, and let's say Synovus decided to be the lender do the $6,880,000 loan, let's say on a piece of real estate. Um, they would actually put that money into our investment vehicle as well, along with our tax credit proceeds. And you'll see in a second how that would flow out. So the impact of the project of this tax credit sale, this 39% tax credit, that goes along with this leverage loan, there are heavy, heavy, heavy legal fees, uh, usually um, 400,000 upfront is what's budgeted on them. And then ongoing compliance, regulatory fees, et cetera, so on that are paid in annual payments uh, from the recipient industry or business or nonprofit uh, into the investment fund. And at the end of the day, uh, the business or entity in this case would end up with $2,020,000. And what we would do is we would take those proceeds and along with the leverage loan that they received from their bank, uh, we would make that $3,120,000 loan for seven years at however much we need to cover these fees. Uh, as a nonprofit, we're not going to try and profit off of them. We're going to pay our costs and our expenses. Um, and the net impact of the business that they would end up at at the end of seven years would be they would have the option to buy their note back for $1,000. They end up with, with uh, just over $2 million in free money in the project. $2 million in free money in the project, which allows them to do more than they would normally do. You got the next slide, Stephanie? This is a diagram of that transaction. So what happens because Treasury calls it a, uh, requires it to be an investment, a qualified equity investment um, into us and into the project. Uh, the lender generally works on that leverage loan on one side of it, negotiates with the business, and they just tell us at what terms uh, that they want to do that loan at. I went through the example where we sell the, the tax credits and get the $3,120,000 in to create the $10 million. And that goes out in two loans, these loans, loans A and B that I walked, walked through. I'd use the term forgiven there. That's probably a no-no. Uh, technically, it's a, it's a loan is sold for $1,000 at the end of it. Net benefit of, of, of $2 million. The, 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 the key is that $2 million and twenty is going to vary from project to project depending on whether they have consultants, how much legal fees are involved. Uh, it's, et cetera, and so on. What, what time of year the, the, the investment is sold, all that can impact how much money uh, gets into the, into the investment. The good news, though, is, is where right now, if you're a, a community or an economic developer and you're looking for someone who has an allocation, there's not a whole bunch of people who have allocation left from 2020 to put into these projects to do this. When these awards are announced, in the next 45 days, 30 to 45 days is what we expect, then that is when that funding is going to become available. So now is the time, if someone wants to pursue it, that they need to be on our radar, uh, as well as probably others' radar who are, are seeking these investments uh, to put into these projects. Uh, next slide. So why do we think we stand, we're, we're a newbie, and the first thing we're told by the consultants is, is that new applicants to, for new market tax credits rarely get funded. That's just a fact. Our, our advisory board, when we had the meeting, they asked me to give a percentage, and I said 60%, and they said, why so low? And I, I said, because we're not going against any duds. It's like being in AAA baseball and everybody throws 97 miles an hour. All 208 organizations that are applying, all of them have a great story. All of them have been successful trying to serve uh, low-income communities. They have experience in new market tax credits and other economic development. It is a highly, highly, highly competitive process. We're going up against the state of Pennsylvania. We're going up with all these other entities that have done this for years and years and years. One of the things that we think we have in our hands, the first one, Georgia was one of the seven underserved states. We get bonus points in our app for that fact. And rather than just saying it, we, we're, we're going to do it. It's obvious in the totality of our application that not only are we going to do it, it's what we, our company has done for years and years and years. The fact we're applying in a first round with this $5 billion versus $3.5 billion, it's good for first-timers. First 208 applied, 100 are expected to be selected. 
We asked for $65 million. We're really hoping for 30 to $50 million. Carver, when they were awarded in the first round, they received $30 million. They received $50 million in the second round. I think Carver deserves, has earned the right to get more investment going forward. What they're doing impacting minority communities as one of the nation's 27 African-American chartered banks. I see them being a player for years to come in the New Market Tax Credit Program. We would like to focus in rural Georgia and in the smaller metro areas of the state. And I told our advisory board, I was born in Columbus when my dad was a uh, division command sergeant major was a big red one. I went to high school in Macon. I live in Augusta. I played football at Georgia Southern. My grandparents were sharecroppers in South Georgia. Uh, the area of Georgia that my family's from and that, that, uh, that I live in has just not received a whole lot of these credits. And so, um, and so we're hoping to be able to impact those. Truest Habitat for Humanity Carver, as I mentioned, they all received allocations last July, and the next application round was very short. It was only four months after that uh, with COVID, and we don't, we don't know that they're going to apply, so they may not be competitors for us. Atlanta Emerging Markets, they receive hundreds of millions in allocations. Historically, they typically only serve Atlanta. Uh, we're going to serve the rest of Georgia. We think that'll bode well. We know one other uh, very qualified economic development entity uh, that, that has done some stuff statewide has applied as well. Uh, we've had tremendous support with our advisory board. Uh, we, we're essentially almost a co-op between multiple economic development organizations in the state, uh, the Georgia Department of Community Affairs, the Georgia Association of Regional Commissions, all these groups have had us in. We've talked to them, have given us their support of what we're trying to do. We think that would be seen as a strength of CDFI. When we applied, we were going to originally apply for $100 million. The, the investors told me uh, that, okay, if you want to apply for $100 million, you need to have $200 million in bank letters of support, or the consultants did. And we ended up um, we ended up getting $220 million in letters of support. And one of the cool things that's happened lately is we've had seven of those banks, seven of the top 25 banks in Georgia, have gone together and they are now, right now, reviewing a proposal to form their own fund to buy the credits if we're successful getting them. So it would make it to where we would get a more stable pricing, more money would make it into the deals at the end of it. They could make these investments here in Georgia uh, and, and assist the state. And there, there's, a, uh, there's a tremendous amount of excitement amongst those seven. We've received favorable feedback, all seven CEOs, all seven um, CFOs, and right now they are going through how much they would commit if we're successful in the next 45 days in getting these. Uh, they told us we need to have a pipeline of projects of 200 million. If we're asking for 100, we end up getting 850 million. Now, a lot of these projects have already been funded. One of them's already been funded with a new market tax credit in Athens that was on our list. A couple others have fallen through. Um, anybody has a project out there right now? And, you, and that gives you an idea of how many people are asking for this allocation. We think we're going to get 40 million and we've received 850 million in, in, in projects. You know, we're hoping to get 40 million rather. Um, and we receive 850 million just inquiries on projects. Um, the ones that transform severely distressed communities in the state, they're the ones that are, that, that are going to get funded, the most transformational. So if you have that project, that WOW project, it would absolutely change one of our cities or counties uh, around the state, then we need to know about it. We need to know about it now. And I'll show you why for the, for the A and B. The other thing we think is going to benefit is Treasury doesn't let you blow smoke at them on these applications. It's 55 questions. Uh, one of the questions they ask the first time is it shows what you've actually done. Not don't tell us what you can do, show us what you've actually done. Uh, from the date they announce the application uh, through uh, over the last five years, plus the current year, the date they announced the application, rather, we ended up having 163 projects for $221 million over the last five years. And 43% of those projects were in the red area in, in uh, severely distressed low-income communities. We've done that with a 2.3% past due rate, and we haven't had a charge-off in our major loan program since 2018. So where I say at the bottom, Treasury's going to make this announcement late July, early August. We're now hearing it's probably going to be later in August. Uh, but we still need those leads uh, now uh, to know, make sure our, our advisory board, our board wants to absolutely make sure in fairness to all the counties in Georgia, that all the cities in Georgia, 
that we put the word out near and far and the most transformational projects and deserving projects uh, get these awards. That group of 12 that I put up on the list earlier, they're the 12 of those side. When we get applications in, whether it will be, you know, a yes or no for those projects uh, after we do our initial screening. Uh, next slide, please. So you remember I mentioned the Tipton deal. You know, sort of that's sort of ground zero of the type project that we want to do. Um, my, my father grew up. He dropped out of middle school when he was 13 and had to go to the family farm in Cook County, which is a county south of, uh, of Tifton. And, um, and to see a deal go in like that with $22 million in, a, in an area like Tifton and get Coca-Cola to put a, a plant in is a huge impact. When you look at when you send us or you call us on a project, what's going to make decisions, whether we do them, we're going to do an impact study on every one of them, never gratitude. What's going to decide whether we do them or not is going to be whether they impact these things on this sheet. The top four right now are really the areas in our application that we really chimed in on. Uh, areas of severe distress, high quality jobs, paying better than average benefits, non-metropolitan counties. And one of the things that's very difficult in doing that in, in Georgia is Treasury doesn't use the term rural. They use non-metropolitan counties, and because we have 159 counties, only 14% of all Georgians live in non-qualifying metro areas. According to census definition, 59% of all Georgians live in metro Atlanta. Our application is essentially trying to target the other 41%, and then out of that, only 14% of that 41 is going to be in a non-metro county to meet that, that qualification. We have several projects that are in that bucket. That, that were in the pipeline that were, that were given to us and would welcome more. Impact communities of color, which with what's gone on in the, in, in the last year, and you look at the poverty statistics, if you're a person of color living outside of, that, uh, of Metro Atlanta versus living in Metro Atlanta, there's almost double a poverty rate uh, for that group. Um, the rest of them, all these qualifiers. The Tifton deal, it got all the top seven all the way down to the SBA hub zone. So that's why you saw the enticement for three CDEs when the impact study was done and they checked those top seven boxes. That's what the Treasury Department wants done with this program. That's who's going to win. What's not going to win is a developer who calls us, who's going to do the deal anyway, who's putting a very badly needed, maybe mixed-use development in an area that, that is in the yellow that happens to be eligible that really doesn't check too many of these boxes. It doesn't have a whole lot of jobs, et cetera, so on. We could get our allocation, and we could get allocation for $40 million, and we could do one project with the entire $40 million allocation that creates 35 jobs, and it would get funded. And we would never be funded again when we apply to Treasury. Treasury puts a responsibility on us, that group of advisory board members, to make sure these boxes are checked. Okay, next slide, please. Do you want to know if your project is eligible and what impact it might have? We do not use CDFI's mapping website, and there are some other really great uh, uh, CPA firms in the country that build new markets. We use Novogratix. And if you go to Novogratix and you go to the New Market Tax Credit page on their site, and then you click on the mapping software and you put the address in, it's going to pop up and say in an eligible area or not in an eligible area. Um, and then if it's in an eligible area, you'll, you'll see a, a drop down menu to the left. You can click on it for el other eligibility factors, and it will show it's in a hub zone, it's, uh, uh, it's in a Brownsfield, um, it's in an enterprise zone, whatever the case may be on checking any of those boxes. So I encourage you to look there. Um, next slide. So here's where we are and here's the ask. What we're doing right now, and I can't thank Larry Hansel on our advisory board enough for letting us get on this call, and we're going to probably do this with some other groups over the next couple of weeks. But start spreading the word on the possibility we'll be getting these new market tax credits in August. Whether we get them or whether some of the other organizations that are competing with us get them, 
or whether national organizations that have targeted Georgia are getting. There's going to be $5 billion in new market tax credits available 40 days from now. That's a fact. And, and a lot of those are going to be targeted at Georgia. If we get our allocation, we're going to deploy the capital, close the deals. We probably won't reply in the next round. We'll take a round off and we reply again to try and get more. The typical, when I give the Carver example, Carver applied six times before they ever got an allocation. Stuck with it because they knew the impact to their communities and to their credit, and Robert's credit, the CEO of that bank. He got it, and they've done some transformational things. We would like to be another player to do the same thing like they're doing, the same thing in land emerging markets. Yes, we need to be, we need to have more people doing it. So we would apply again in 2023. If we don't get an allocation, um, we're going to apply in the next round. And that application window would open probably, would, application we do about four months after the announcement, so we think it would be due right around Christmas. Either way, we've got to have a pipeline to show them. So when we do get allocation, we can fund the projects. So that's where Georgia Power and ECG and, and GMA, by putting on these, um, these, these webinars with us, that's where they helped us spread the word, and we got all those leads, $845 million. Uh, to try and bring more of these to, to, to uh, credit. If we don't get them, we can help find homes. We've already done that on one of the projects that was in our pipeline that needed to fund now. We reached out to some consultants. Uh, we actually reached out uh, to Chase and some of the other national players. And because of the project, because of the impact in the community it was in, uh, they jumped on board with it and are, are going to try and get it funded with an allocation they've had. So we've already essentially located an allocation for one other entity. That particular entity uh, and that particular transaction is in one, in one of George, Georgia's poorest counties that has one manufacturing company. And when I say it has one, it doesn't have one and a half. It's got one. It employs around 300 people. Governor Joe Frank Harris gave them a, a free building at a $100 lease for 20 years, and that lease is expiring, and they're looking to move because the lease is expiring and they're going to have to uh, buy the building and so the, so or, or pay additional rent and since that overhead is going to increase they go you know what we've got another plant metro outside of metro atlanta we may just go out onto that plant and do it we talked to the municipality in that case they said you guys know about tax credits had a couple of calls we got one of the most respected tax credit consultants in the state she heard the story she agreed to help them as a consultant, and she's made contacts at the national level, and hopefully we're going to try and get that deal funded. If they don't fund it and we get an allocation, we definitely will go back to that particular project and try and fund that one. And I will tell you right now, we don't have any set um, deals right now that we know we're going to absolutely do. Tony. So it's, it's wide open if we get this allocation to consider any and all, whether they were in the first pot or whether we get it two days from now, the lead. So just be aware of that. Um, if y'all can help us, spread the word. All they got to do is call us. We'll send them a simple sheet. We'll mark it up. We'll take notes. We'll talk about what numbers they may know. You can keep it totally confidential. If it's a state economic developer or a local economic development official that's on the line that's listening to this, if you want to call it Project Zebra, it can be Project Zebra all the way up to the end. The only person will know about it will be me, and our advisory board will not until they vote. Because one of the unique things we're going to do is when we get the allocation and the company wants to request the allocation, they'll be on a 30-minute Zoom call with our statewide advisory board, and they'll have to ask them, essentially ask them on behalf of the citizens of Georgia, does this impact the state enough to warrant this credit? So they'll make the pitch directly uh, to, to our advisory board. And that's one of the unique things we're going to do uh, with our board and our advisory board. So next slide, Stephanie. I think that's it. I think we get uh, we got a little bit of time. If anybody wanted to ask any questions, or if Chris, if you saw any questions come in, and if I can't get an answer to a question, I will certainly uh, get with our consultants and get you an answer to that question. Uh, we didn't see I didn't see any questions in the chat, but Randy, I I just want to um, emphasize to our our viewers. Um, that you are there to handhold them through this process. And if they have any questions, they can contact you directly. Um, we really are in the process of looking for projects to submit. 
so even if you're not sure if your project's going to qualify, definitely reach out to Randy um, and he can give you more information. We're going to have this uh, recording available on the GeorgiaCitiesFoundation.org website. We'll also be posting the uh, PowerPoint presentation uh, that'll accompany the recording. Uh, we will be sending this recording out hopefully in some of our social media as well as um, the GMA newsletter. So this is, this is we're really doing a push. We want to see our cities participate in this program. Um, and it's just, a, it's a really invaluable opportunity, but the window is closing. So Randy, uh, thank you so much for presenting this information to our cities. And hopefully we can garner some projects for you and, and, uh, and get this, get this, get us Georgia some some really great projects going utilizing these tax credits yeah we will put out an announcement that uh, can be shared with everyone just as soon as Treasury makes the announcement we will know we've been told the notification will go to our senators and a congressman uh, first and then we'd be contacted by their office to let us know whether we're in or out so um, that's that's how we'll sort of get word and we'll pass it along to everyone and Stephanie thank you again uh, to you Larry and the Georgia Municipal Association for doing this on multiple occasions um, as I told our advisory board, if we're going to do more for rural Georgia in, in the areas outside of Georgia, it's sort of incumbent on all of us in nonprofit and trade associations to identify the opportunities that are out there and try and bring them into the state. We're a little bit out of our comfort level on this. This is something we don't do. Uh, we do SBA lending. We do traditional, you know, commercial lending, and we do a lot of it. We have 123 million of projects in process right now. But this is something that we think is badly needed, and we think we can help bring it to Georgia. So appreciate everyone's help. We've had so much help from so many agencies and can't thank again uh, GMA enough for their help in this. So thank you all and uh, have a good day. Thanks Randy and we'll see you guys next time on the next development sessions.